Regardless, if you're gonna be installing a brand new gate or already dealing with an existing gate that is sagging, I hope that you learned something from these tips and tricks on the topic. First, let's make sure that the gate is the actual problem and not a post. Sometimes a post can be leaning so that it seems like the gate is the issue. One option is to definitely reset the post. However, an easier solution is to install a header which will span from the corner post to the other post. This will not only stabilize that corner post but also keep it in plumb. If you're gonna be building a fence brand new, know that this is a common issue so that you'll either take your time and set that corner post properly or you can go ahead and install a header at the very beginning before it ever has a chance to lean. Whenever I'm building new, my go-to design is to put in a diagonal brace. The most important thing to realize is the direction of the diagonal does matter. If you want the science terms, you need the diagonal to be in compression and not in tension. If you want in layman's terms, the bottom of the diagonal needs to be at the base of the post, then it needs to extend up to the opposite corner. This is in compression. If you have it opposite, then this will put it in tension and it's not gonna be serving the function, which is to prevent sagging. I recently built a door, which is essentially just a large gate, and I showed the effectiveness of when a diagonal is installed correctly versus incorrectly. If you have an existing gate that's sagging, the easiest solution is to use a turnbuckle kit. These are found at any of the big or small hardware stores and can be installed in just a few minutes. It essentially does the exact same thing as a wooden diagonal, but can be installed anytime, and more importantly, it's adjustable. A few things to note here, the screws holding the turnbuckle on are gonna be under a lot of tension, and some kits come with a plate, which will allow multiple screws to share that tension. However, However, if yours does not come with the plate and is just put in with a single screw, make sure you upgrade to a big screw or personally, I would recommend going with a quarter inch lag. I'm not a huge fan of the turnbuckle and if you're in the same boat, then know that another option is to do corner gussets or corner brackets. These can be made from wood or hardware. And you know, these days companies like Pilex are getting really great at making highly functional hardware that's also very decorative. Let me pause real quick and thank Green Chef for bringing you this video. Surely y'all can tell just how busy I stay and while I actually love cooking, I don't like making the time to go to the store or figure out new meals to prepare. And that's why I love Green Chef. There are plenty of benefits of going with Green Chef, such as they offset 100% of their delivery emissions and 100% of their plastic in every box. But what I really love is they make cooking easy. By getting a box of Green Chef to my door, I am eating healthy, I'm eating a wide range of meals, and it is as stress-free as it can be. You can get 60% off plus free shipping on your first box if you use my code AprilWilkerson60. You go to greenchef.com for more details. I know there are a lot of these services around, but Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company and has options for every lifestyle, including keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fit and fast, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. Now, if you're gonna be going with something much longer, like a property gate, a popular idea is to add a caster. However, this is only gonna be an option if you have relatively flat ground. That wasn't an option for me when I was building my two property gates. So what I did was put an arch top on it. This is not only a flare of style, but again, it serves a functional purpose. And that is to prevent sagging over time. Staying in the vein of a sliding option. Instead of a swinging option where you have to deal with preventing sagging, I recently installed a sliding gate utilizing hardware that made the entire thing go together in just an hour. If you haven't done any big woodworking projects, then this would be a great one to start with because of how simple it is. All you need is four two by fours cut to the size of your wanted gate. Then you can use corner brackets to secure everything together. Screws are included with the hardware. The important thing is sometimes two by fours are a little twisted. So you just have to make sure they seat all the way in the hardware before you secure them. The instructions and pre-drilled holes in the hardware make it very clear on where to attach what. Pretty simple folks, such as the latch and the wheels. 
I'm utilizing the same railing system that matches the rest of my railing. So I went ahead and secured the clips for that railing system before moving my gate outside. However, you can make the inside of this gate look any way you like because the hardware is doing all of the function for you. So the inside is just aesthetics. Now on the railing system, an attachment that is sort of like a hook is attached to the rails so that the gate I just built can easily slip up and under it. A matching hook is installed along the bottom so that the bottom is also captured. Ooh. Ooh. And you can see just how quick and easy this is. The main thing to pay attention to when thinking about a sliding gate as an option is that you need enough room for the gate to open fully. So however wide you want your gate, you just need to make sure you have that same amount to the right or left side of it. And this hardware can go either to the right or left. Something unique that this hardware needs is a slot in the railing. So I plan for that when building out my railing system and before putting on the top cap. The system I'm going with is made by a company called Pilex and there is a link for you down in the description if you want to check it out. I'm absolutely a fan of the rolling option when possible and I'm also a fan of the black hardware against the wood look. I think this is not only gorgeous, but the function is gonna save me a lot of headache and adjustments in the future. One last thing to consider installing to prevent frustration is a self-adjusting latch. If you install a traditional swing gate and it sags just a little bit, or maybe the post moves slightly, then the latch won't latch, and it'll bounce back. However, self-adjusting latches have a little play built into them so that they will work when things are slightly misaligned. And I have left you links to all the hardware I mentioned in this video down below. I hope that these tips have helped you out if you're dealing with a sagging gate or gave you food for thought if you're building brand new. Leave a comment if I left off a good tip that you think future viewers can benefit from. And I'll see you on my next video, guys.